you all in the afternoon session of ACD Chennai 2022 day 2. Uh, in this talk we will be talking about are you helming it the right way. A quick introduction about myself. Uh, this is Prakash. I'm a solutions architect at DevFront with more than 11 years of industry experience. Also an active contributor and maintainer of the open source DevFront project on GitHub. You can connect with me on the following social media links on Twitter, GitHub, and LinkedIn. Coming to the agenda of today's talk, uh, so I'll be talking about what is Helm and some challenges faced by Helm users. Then I'll be introducing you to DevFront and how DevFront helps you to overcome those challenges faced by Helm users. Next, I'll also be talking about some other DevFront integrations, uh, which will be followed by the Q&A. Moving on to the next slide, what is Helm? People in the Kubernetes ecosystem might always already be aware of this term, and uh, they might have already used uh, Helm. Uh, uh, but uh, people who are new to Kubernetes ecosystem, uh, Helm is the most popular package manager for Kubernetes. Just like you have pip for uh, Python and um, npm, and then we have uh, Homebrew for uh, Mac. Uh, similarly, we have package manager uh, for Kubernetes, which is called Helm. And this is the most widely used package manager across uh, Kubernetes ecosystem. Uh, Helm chart is basically a collection of templates uh, which renders some values and it generates Kubernetes manifest that gets applied to the cluster. Uh, you can package, configure, distribute, and deploy applications using Helm chart. It is the most popular uh, distribution uh, uh, channel for open source uh, applications that can be deployed on uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster. And uh, chart repositories is where we uh, host the Helm chart. So there are different uh, chart repositories which are maintained by uh, different maintainers now. Uh, so you can just add those repositories when using when you are using the Helm, and you can uh, use the already existing charts over there. And you can also create your own custom charts if you want and deploy your own custom applications. Uh, on the left, we have a very simple stick representation of how exactly Helm works. So we have templates, and then we have some values. So the values are uh, the Helm engine. Uh, is a templating engine which uh, renders these values uh, through these templates and generates uh, the Kubernetes manifests which get applied to uh, the Kubernetes cluster. Next, we'll be talking about challenges faced by Helm users. Uh, so I'll be discussing each of these uh, challenges one by one in the following slides. And um, we'll also be discussing how DevFron helps you resolve those uh, challenges. Let's introduce you to DevFron. DevFron is an open source uh, tool integration platform that deeply integrates with multiple cloud native tools to give you a unified dashboard for a seamless experience. Can deploy, observe, and monitor all the Kubernetes microservices deployed in multiple Kubernetes clusters across multiple cloud providers or even on premise. Let me give you a quick demo of how you can easily deploy any health chart using uh, DevFron. On the left pane, you can go to the chart store. You'll find various charts listed in this uh, chart store. You can also add your own uh, chart repos and it will list all your charts uh, and show it over here. So let me just pick one chart to deploy. I'll uh, deploy a Bitnami Apache. So on this page, it shows all the information about the chart. If there is any existing deployments uh, for that particular chart, it also shows up over here. You can just select the chart version I want to deploy and the chart values and then click on deploy. I'll give it a name, demo4 Apache, and select the environment where I want to deploy. So I want to deploy this in DevCron demo namespace. I want to save in some values. I don't want to provision a load balancer. So I just will be changing the service type to cluster IP. And uh, I can refer the readme from the left if I want to, but uh, for this demo, I don't require it. I'll just close this down and hit on deploy. 
and voila that's how you deploy a helm chart using defron so chart has been deployed as you can see that it's creating the resources it has created a deployment object and then it is creating a pod so let me check the events of the pod okay and i also have an option to check the logs of the pod Coming to the first and foremost uh, challenge that is faced by most of the users which are migrating to Kubernetes or adopting Kubernetes is access management for various team members. And when I talk about various team members, it uh, includes uh, infra, DevOps, and as well as uh, uh, developers. So gone are the days when uh, developers used to just uh, uh, test out their code in local environment and commit it to the GitHub repository. Uh, they want to do more now. They want to follow the deployment process. They want to see what is happening after the release has happened. They want to actively monitor the application, uh, monitor various metrics of the application. So uh, it becomes crucial for uh, uh, them to have access of the applications that they are uh, owning. So I'll quickly give you a demo of how uh, you can uh, uh, manage access or, and provide access to all the team members uh, using DevCron UI. Okay, so this is the, the DevCron UI and under global configuration, so you would find user access. Uh, so you have an, uh, an option to like give individual uh, accesses to various users in the organization, or you can also create gro various groups for uh, uh, various types of access that you want to give and then assign those groups to various users. So I'll, I'll just show you how you can create a group uh, and how you can manage the accesses. So I, I'm, I'm going to create a, a group for uh, uh, which will give you uh, give which will give users access uh, uh, to a certain namespace, which is the QA namespace, and uh, uh, the and the users will have the only access to this particular uh, namespace applications. So for that, I'll have to so uh, project is something that uh, will only come into picture if you are deploying uh, uh, the applications using DevTron. If you are not deploying the application using DevTron, uh, it always lies under an assigned project category. Uh, so I can select the environment and namespace that I want to give access to. So environment here is uh, a combination of cluster and uh, namespace. So uh, it shows the uh, cluster name, which is which in this case is the default cluster right now, and the uh, DevCron I think demo is the environment name. So I want to give access to this particular environment. I can select multiple uh, namespaces as well, uh, and I can also select multiple namespaces across uh, various environments. So if I want to give uh, uh, access to uh, the user uh, for two clusters, uh, uh, I can also do that uh, within this scope. Uh, right now, I am just giving access to one in, uh, namespace, and then I'll have option to select uh, application deployed application. So, if I want to give access to entire namespace, I can also do that. If I want to give uh, access to only certain applications which are deployed in that particular namespace, I can also do that. In this case, there is no application deployed yet, uh, so it's not showing me uh, popularity in this particular case. So I'll, I'll just select all applications in this particular namespace, and then I'll proceed to the permission level. Uh, Defron currently supports three permissions level for the Helm charts, which are uh, view only, view and edit, and admin access. So view only, uh, with view only permissions, user will be only to uh, user will be able to view uh, all the resources that the uh, uh, Helm chart has deployed and uh, he will be able to check the logs of the application, uh, check the metrics of the application. Uh, the user with view and edit access will be able to, in addition to what new uh, uh, user, uh, what new access users can, uh, he will be able to edit the resources uh, of uh, the Kubernetes resource, uh, manifest and apply it to the, uh, back to the cluster as well. Uh, 
users with admin access will be able to uh, deploy, edit, and view all the uh, resources of that particular within the uh, scope of their uh, app, uh, application or the environment. So once you have defined the accesses, you can just save this group and then you can go ahead and assign it to any user. So if, I'm, if I want to assign it to my user, so I, I can just select it from uh, this drop down. Uh, so uh, right now we have only this uh, group. So I have already selected that. And once I've selected it, uh, I can just hit on save and it uh, gives me permissions, so all those permissions, so which are uh, which you gave in this to this particular group. Similarly, you can also give uh, group uh, permissions uh, paired with uh, individual permissions as well. So if I have to give uh, one permission to this particular user, let's say the front CD in a namespace and uh, all applications, I should be able to admin. Uh, I should be able to deploy all the applications. So I'm giving admin access and I'm going to save it. So this is how you can give individual accesses to the users as well. So the next challenge that Helm users generally face is that there is no active monitoring of the resources. Uh, when I say there's no active monitoring, which means that after the release has happened, uh, if some in, if somebody by chance has uh, deleted any of the resources or uh, by any chance uh, there is a pod that gets into crash tube back off, uh, Helm has no way of monitoring that. Uh, I'll quickly switch to the demo and show you how uh, Defron helps you actively monitor the resources even after the deployment happens. Okay, I'm back on the Defron UI for a quick demo. So uh, just select one of the applications. So this is uh, one of the Helm chart uh, which has been deployed. Uh, so this is using a uh, Bitnami Elasticsearch Helm chart to deploy our Elasticsearch stack uh, into uh, a Kubernetes cluster. So right now, if you can see the application status of this uh, chart shows as healthy, okay? So let's see what happens when I delete this pod, the Kibana pod. Okay, so as soon as I delete this pod, there is a new pod that gets created because of, of course it is controlled by the deployment uh, controller. So, but the status of the application changes to progressing, right? And when I click on the details, it shows me what resources exactly are in progressing state. So if I can see here, uh, it's the deployment uh, which controls their replica set and that controls the pod, which uh, the three are in progressing state right now. Okay, so let's wait for this to uh, get into the healthy state. Meanwhile, I can go ahead and uh, delete any other resource like let's say ingress. So ingress, uh, if I delete this ingress, It is not controlled by any controller, so it will not get uh, replaced with a new one. So as soon as I uh, delete the ingress object, it shows, it starts showing as missing and the uh, entire application status also uh, shows missing. And when I click on the details, it shows me exactly what resource is missing, which is the ingress. Okay, so this is exactly how Devcron uh, actively monitors all the resources uh, of your Helm deployment. The next challenge faced by Helm users is that there is no proper grouping of resources uh, which are deployed by uh, any Helm chart. The Helm chart uh, can, uh, can create multiple resources ranging between 10 to 50 or even hundreds of resources uh, for some big Helm charts. So, uh, when it comes to debugging something, uh, some issues that you have uh, with any of the deployments, uh, it becomes so very difficult to sort of debug things. So uh, because of uh, no proper grouping of uh, resources. So I'll quickly give you a demo of how Devron helps you here. All right, I'm back on uh, the Devron UI. So this chart which has been deployed uh, using Helm, uh, I can see that uh, it has so 
created 38 or odd resources uh, and i can see that see all those resources grouped uh, under this these categories over here so under workloads i have uh, various pods which are created using deployments i have stateful sets as well um, then i can see there are endpoints ingress service um, the config and storage has config maps for system volume claims secrets and then there are some R back objects as well, uh, along with the custom resources that it uh, has created within. So this is how DevCron shows you all the resources uh, that this particular chart has created, categorized uh, uh, in this particular format. And uh, it's very easy when it comes to debugging because you can, so there are any events, uh, you can check the events. So you can see the events. I can even see the logs of uh, any of the container of this pod. I can do a quick grab. Uh, so I can even exit inside the container using the same UI. So I am inside the container in the Kibana pod. I can uh, do my debugging activities over here. So. That's all you can do. Log analyzer helps you see uh, logs of various resources uh, of your uh, Helm chart deployment. That's also an added benefit with DevCron that you can see uh, and analyze logs of various resources uh, right from the UI. So let's suppose if you have uh, a demon set that has uh, 50 pods running, uh, so you don't have to go uh, uh, for to each pod and check the logs. You can uh, check the logs of all the pods uh, using log analyzer. Moving on to the next problem faced by uh, Helm users is uh, when they are trying to uh, deploy a Helm chart which has a lot of information in the values by uh, and a lot of parameters that can be configured. So generally, uh, what Helm users do is they they, are, they have uh, the values file open in their web editor, and then they are referring to various parameters on the readme of uh, that particular chart's uh, uh, repository. And uh, from there, they are referring each parameter, and then they are making changes inside uh, the web editor, and then they go ahead and deploy it. But uh, Defron gives you a better way to do that. Let's uh, see how you can do that in different. Okay, I am back on the different UI again. So let's go to the values. So if I have to configure some values so in the Helm chart, I'll just click the readme on the left side and it opens a uh, side by side uh, readme for me. So I, if I have to change some parameters over here on the right pane, I'll refer to the parameters and I'll see uh, to the description what it does and uh, I'll make the change accordingly in the right plane and go ahead and uh, deploy this application with the changes. So that's uh, very, very handy when it comes to editing long value files so like Nginx Ingress Controller or maybe uh, Elasticsearch itself has a long values file. Uh, so any, any chart with comes with a lot of resources uh, has a long value files and uh, it really comes handy when you have the reference to the various parameters opened up on the left side while editing those values next uh, problem uh, we have uh, there's no unified interface for managing helm applications across all your clusters so uh, you might have multiple clusters, uh, uh, some non-prod, some maybe prod, uh, but there's no unified interface where you can, uh, from where you can control all the deployments or monitor all the resources from. So DevTron gives you a way to do that. So I'll go to the global configurations and under clusters, I can see that I have uh, two clusters listed over here. You can add multiple uh, Kubernetes clusters. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter what version they are or uh, on what cloud they are. It can be on GCP, Azure, or even on uh, on-premise cluster uh, can be added to this different uh, instance. 
And once you add the clusters to uh, your DevCron, you should be able to see all the Helm applications which are deployed in those particular clusters in all the namespaces. You can you can select the clusters from the drop down here, and it displays all the Helm applications which are uh, present in those uh, two clusters that I have selected. Uh, and this is all uh, with. Uh, the RBAC policies in place. So if uh, the user has access to only one cluster, he will be able to see uh, applications which are deployed in that particular cluster or uh, in a particular namespace if he has access to that particular namespace. No out-of-box support for hibernation of workloads. So uh, with Helm, you can either have it uh, installed on your Kubernetes cluster, or you can just uninstall, uh, which will remove all the Kubernetes uh, uh, objects that it has created, including all the workloads. But uh, he, you may be in a situation that you are doing a long-term POC, and um, for which uh, you require some uh, Helm charts to be deployed, uh, they may be resource intensive as well. So, uh, and then you might want to pause those POCs for a while to switch on some more priority tasks. So in those cases, uh, uh, what normally you'll do is you'll actually remove those resources and uh, 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 free up your Kubernetes uh, cluster. Uh, uh, but Devron gives you a better way to do, tackle that problem. So with Diffron, you have an option to scale down your workloads if uh, they are not required. So uh, as soon as I click on scale workloads, it shows these uh, workloads that uh, this particular uh, uh, Helm chart has created. So I can selectively select all the resources that I want to scale down. So I see that uh, these are the most resource intensive workloads I want to scale down. So I'll just select it. I'll leave Kibana. Uh, it's not that uh, resource intensive and I'll scale all the workloads to zero. So that will uh, scale all the selected workloads to zero. And you can see that uh, all the pods will start terminating and the status will change to partially hibernated. So if we go see that uh, the pods are not there. If I see there's only one pod now, which is the Kibana pod, and all the other pods have been scaled down. If I want to uh, scale it up anytime, I can go to the scale down, uh, scale down workloads. I can select the uh, objects that I want to scale, workloads that I want to scale up. I can click on restore workloads, and it will just bring up those workloads again. So it helps you save costs. Uh, on your uh, non-prod clusters when you're doing a lot of POCs and you might not want to uh, work on a uh, certain uh, chart for a longer duration or maybe over a weekend. So you can do that easily from uh, different UI. Okay, Helm doesn't give you any intuitive way to uh, compare the values uh, file uh, that you have uh, previously deployed. Uh, so you can, of course, do this uh, with some hacky ways. You can get the values from Helm get uh, values, and then you can use Vimdev to uh, compare those values against the changes done. Uh, but Devron gives you a more intuitive way of doing that. It highlights all the changes uh, that were done. And uh, you can select uh, uh, the date and time uh, of the deployment uh, that happened in the past, and you can compare them the changes against the uh, currently deployed changes uh, in a side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, so let's talk about some more different features and integrations uh, apart from the Helm uh, plugin uh, that we uh, just saw. So. Uh, I would uh, show you a quick demo because we have less time uh, here for an application. So if you can see, it's uh, the UI is so uh, very much pretty much same as it was there in uh, case of the Helm applications. Uh, it's just that uh, you see these pretty metrics over here, which shows you CPU usage, memory usage, throughput of the application, the latency of the application. You can also 
uh, select to show these meters on board basis as well since this has two ports so uh, now it shows you uh, the matrix on board basis it also shows uh, uh, if there are any critical vulnerabilities uh, in the image which is deployed uh, so it shows uh, two moderate uh, vulnerabilities and uh, five uh, low uh, vulnerabilities which uh, this image has nothing critical as such and then um, this uh, different integration also comes with uh, SSO login so you can uh, directly create users and let them uh, log in through their organizations uh, provided by Gmail or Microsoft or you can even configure GitHub. So here is some information that I would like to share about the different project. Uh, you can check out the different uh, GitHub repository at different-labs. Uh, you can uh, fork out uh, this uh, repository and also contribute back to the uh, original project. Uh, Defron is licensed under Apache 2.0, uh, which is the most liberal license in the open source. So you can go on this link and join our Discord server. You can even check out the documentation and you can see how uh, you can install your own Defron cluster, either on a local Kubernetes cluster or on a production grade uh, Kubernetes cluster. There are many organizations which uh, use uh, Defron for uh, deployments in the production environment. So more than thousands of uh, microservices are being deployed using Defron on daily basis. These are some prominent organizations which are using Defron as an enterprise uh, uh, customers. And there, there are uh, tons of other open source users which are using Defron for uh, non-prod or production use cases. Okay, so the session is open for any question and answers.